From its very beginnings, the Hebrew University's development was influenced by some of the greatest minds of our time. Albert Einstein, Chaim Weizmann, Sigmund Freud, Martin Buber, Ahada Am are just some of the leaders associated with the university. We have selected just four, each different, but each having had a massive and unique impact on the university. These four are Chaim Weizmann, Albert Einstein, Avram Harman, and Yitzhak Rabin. The footage which follows is from the Steven Spielberg Jewish Film Archive at the university. Chaim Weizmann, later to become the first president of the State of Israel, can be rightly designated the founding father of the Hebrew University. He labored hard for decades to establish the university's place among the great universities of the world and play a central role within the Zionist movement for the renaissance of the Jewish people. He was the catalyst who brought in luminaries such as Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, Martin Buber, and many others to serve the university and establish its reputation as a leading center of research and teaching. As early as 1918, with the laying of the foundation stones, Weizmann outlined the unique role of the Hebrew University. It is to scientific research and its application that we can confidently look for the banishment of those twin plagues of Palestine, malaria and trachoma, for the eradication of other indigenous diseases. It is to true scientific method that we may look for the full cultivation of this fair and fertile land, now so unproductive. The medical school, apart from doing original research, will set the standard in the work of hygiene and public health, and in the investigation of diseases prevailing in Palestine and neighboring countries, as well as in the subtropical regions generally. The outstanding danger from which we must steer clear, the particular danger threatening Palestine, is the danger of Levantinism. Levantinism in this case would be the facade, which would have all the appearance of European science, without the honesty, depth, many-sidedness, and a meticulous exactitude which scientific study requires. At all costs, this scourge must be avoided. Scientific modesty and self-abnegation must prevail, even at the cost of not producing results quickly. Albert Einstein was one of the founding fathers of the Hebrew University. In 1923, some two years before the university was officially opened, he visited Jerusalem and lectured on Mount Scopus on the theory of relativity. He was introduced with the immortal words, Herr Professor, this podium has been waiting for you for 2,000 years. Einstein then proceeded with his lecture, opening with sentences in Hebrew and continuing in German. His close involvement with the university continued until his death in 1955 and was to comprise a major factor in the university's scientific and academic development. He stated, In our tradition, it is neither the ruler nor the politician, neither the soldier nor the merchant who represents the ideal. The ideal is represented by the teacher, that is to say, the person who is able, through his work and his efforts, to enrich the intellectual, moral, and artistic life of his people. The goal is to raise the spiritual level of society. Clearly, the university of a new country that has to fight for her economical and political survival must apply a good deal of its efforts to practical goals if it is not to remain a foreign body in the nation. It may well be said that our university serves its country successfully in this sense without losing sight of its highest goals. Israel is the only place on earth where Jews have the possibility to shape public life according to their traditional ideals. I think we are all greatly concerned that its final shape will be worthy and gratifying. To what extent this goal will be reached depends significantly on the growth and development of the university. Avram Harman served the Hebrew University as president and chancellor from 1968 until his death in 1992. He continued and expanded the legacies of Weizmann and Einstein, stressing excellence and emphasizing the university's role as the university of all the Jewish people. He implemented programs underscoring these concepts and has earned a singular place in the university's history.
In 1985, he said, And finally, there's the Jewish people. Israel is a place where the Jewish will is sovereign. It is within the power of the Jewish people to make our university the realization of all our people's yearnings and dreams. We are here after 60 years because that power has been used. In ancient days, a beacon was lit on Mount Scopus to signal the beginning of the new month and beacons were lit from hill to hill throughout the land. Sixty years ago, a new beacon was lit here to proclaim the revitalization of an ancient hope. Here, we are fashioning the unique contribution of our own people to world civilization. Here, we are retuning the ancient instrument of our people so that its sound may be heard again in the great orchestra of the world's culture. In June 1967, Jerusalem was reunited and the Hebrew University was able to return to its original home on Mount Scopus and begin the mammoth task of rebuilding. That same month, in the historic amphitheater that had been badly damaged by Arab shelling, a special convocation was held and receiving an honorary doctorate from the university was Major General Yitzhak Rabin, Commander-in-Chief of the Israel Defense Forces as the representative of a people's army which had fought a war of survival and won. The army included many of the students, professors, technicians and workers of the university and they fought in Jerusalem and other fronts to repel the enemy that had sought to destroy the Jewish state. On this occasion Yitzhak Rabin symbolized the bond between the university and the people. I stand in awe before you, leaders of the generation. Here in this venerable and impressive place, overlooking Israel's eternal capital and the birthplace of our nation's earliest history. Our educational work has been praised widely and was given national recognition when in 1966 it was granted the Israel Prize for Education. However, today the university has conferred this honorary title on us in recognition of our army's superiority of spirit and morals as it was revealed in the heat of war. For we are standing in this place by virtue of battle which, though forced upon us, was forged into a victory, astounding the world. All of this springs from the spirit and leads back to the spirit. Our warriors prevailed not by their weapons, but by the consciousness of a mission, by a consciousness of righteousness, by a deep love for their homeland, and an understanding of the difficult task laid upon them to ensure the existence of our people in its homeland, to protect, even at the price of their lives, the right of the nation of Israel to live in its own state, free, independent, and peaceful. As the representative of the Israel Defense Forces, and in the name of every one of its soldiers, I accept with pride your recognition. On Saturday evening, November 5, 1995, Yitzhak Rabin, Prime Minister of Israel, was cut down by a cold-blooded fanatic murderer. The following day, a memorial assembly was held on Mount Scopus in the same amphitheater where Major General Yitzhak Rabin had received his honorary doctorate in 1967. Thousands of students, teachers, researchers and workers came to pay homage each feeling of void, the terrible apprehension, the shocking loss of a man who represented a better and safer future for Israel and for the younger generations. The president of the university, Professor Hanok Gutfreund, addressed the assembly. In the last hour of his life, he gave expression to two motifs. One, the song of peace, which he sang along with the audience at the peace rally in Tel Aviv. And the second, his cry of no to violence, at that same rally. This is the legacy he has bequeathed to us. Today, more than ever, we must heed his call to nonviolence and tolerance. We here at the Hebrew University, a large and diverse community, reflect the overall Israeli society in which all points of view and all sectors are represented. We live in a reality of sharpening debates and we are located in Jerusalem where everything that occurs in public life takes on a special intensity. 
Yet, at the Hebrew University, we have succeeded in preserving a civilized level of discussion and debate. This is not something to be regarded as a given, to be dismissed as inconsequential. But rather, we must guard it as we would those things which we hold most dear.